Um, I'm an historical paint and oriental and European lacquer specialist. I've trained in a conservation course and I did my work mainly in, in recovering old houses and techniques and finishes. I did lots of research into old manuals and um, house painting manuals and recipe books. And with those techniques, I actually ended up sort of making new things, but using traditional techniques and materials as well. Um, well, the, the, the cork vessels, they, they came about from sort of doing what I do in London and sort of knowing all about different techniques and kind of realizing how beautiful they are and wanting to kind of bring them to a, a wider audience than just historical houses. So I was on a trip to Portugal and I kind of the, the cork vessels are quite a traditional uh, item in, in Portugal, in rural Portugal, and um, they come especially, particularly from the south of Portugal, which is a, an area which I very much love. And I was walking through the, the cork oak groves and so the kind of those funny shapes of the trees and sort of, I was very attracted by it. And then, you know, it was a moment when it just clicked and I should just use that because the inside is actually very beautiful, the texture of, which is the, the bit that attaches the bark to the trunk itself. Uh, so I took one back to London, sort of tried a few things on and really liked it and then it just came from there. So actually those, the shape is sort of harvested, it is chosen from the tree itself so I have to go to Portugal to choose them and then when I bring them to London I have to shape the hedges to carve them to the shape I want and I sort of apply my sort of techniques on it. Really. Sometimes it's different why you have to use technique on, on timber or on metal or um, so my knowledge of very sort of ancient pigments and techniques sometimes I adapt them for a sort of a more modern approach but always bearing in mind the quality of the materials I'm using and how, how I can best sort of further call if I need to. So for the for the metal ball I'm actually using a, not a traditional lacquer but a modern resin because uh, it's very difficult to control the colours with the lacquer because it's just the, the lacquer itself is kind of brownish and sort of changes the, the, the tonality of the colour. So uh, for that one, in, in particular the metal ball, I decided to um, use resin but I'm still using a very sort of old pigment, um, sort of an, an 18th century pigment which is not very much in use nowadays. So I try to use the, uh, the best of both worlds really if I can. But, but always, you know, bearing in mind the quality, the work is the same, it's kind of all these layers and multi-layers of stuff and rubbing on in between. I uh, very, very, very rarely use any machines to make my part of the work, so doing it that way yeah, is a lot more work, but it's a lot more beautiful. There's nothing really modern that imitates the texture and the quality of those colours. I wouldn't want to do it any other way. I don't, I don't mind the work, the work is fine. It's just, um, yeah, I think for me it's very important that it is, I'm using good quality craftsman, craftsmanship as well as the, the materials themselves and the, the techniques, I think it's all, it's, yeah, otherwise it's just going by ready-made, sort of, comes out of a machine, so there's no, there's no life to, to a piece like that, it's kind of dead really, so, I mean those, those, those things are alive, they, I don't know, sometimes you can, you can feel the time that it's taken to do them and, and the time itself is an element, I think, of, it's part of the, Part of the recipe is an ingredient that not many people can see it, but it does show. Mm -hmm.